So what, what I just described about the fasting practices and the, um, and the everyday diet, uh, really, uh, we don't like to talk about cancer prevention. And why is that? Well, it's really relevant. Let's say we prevent the cancer, but we increase Alzheimer's disease, right? So this is why we don't like to talk about the prevention of one disease. We like to talk about intervening in an aging and the longevity diet and the fasting mimicking diet and the other fasting practices intervene in the aging process. And the aging is by far the number one risk factor for cancer, for Alzheimer, for diabetes, for cardiovascular disease. And that's why we like to act on the aging process and not talk about prevention of cancer. Now, of course, if somebody in the family has a very, very high rate of cancer, yes, then for that person, let's say, there are people that have P53 mutation in the family and or, or BRCA, BR, BRCA1, BRCA2 mutation. Those families have to specifically worry about cancer prevention. But say most other people uh, have to focus more on preventing the aging and aging acceleration. Okay, so then what about treatment, cancer treatment? Um, so many years ago, uh, maybe 15 years ago, we discovered that um, the, the genes that control uh, the protection against aging are also the genes that, and, and they have to be turned off, right? These genes like RAS, PKA, these are, are proteins that work inside of the cell. And they, when, when you're fasting, the normal cells turn them off, right? Or, or, or reduce their activity. Well, it turns out that uh, in cancer, they're always turned down. Okay, so you, it doesn't matter what the cancer is. In the great majority of cancers, these are the oncogenes, and these oncogenes cannot be shut off. And that's the definition of a cancer cell. Uh, so then we start thinking, well, this is great. If, if all normal cells respond to fasting in a very coordinated way, so the great majority of people can fast for a month with no problem. We can go one month with no food, just water, and be perfectly fine. I mean, we, I don't recommend it, but that's possible. Um, so, so then the, 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 the human body and any organism in the world is used to starvation condition, and it can handle it very well. But the cancer is a newly evolved cell, right? It's not supposed to be there. And so it doesn't know how to deal with, with fasting. And so we started thinking, this is great, because maybe there is a way to distinguish all normal cells from all cancer cells. It doesn't matter what the cancer is, you know? And this is, of course, you know, back when we started in 2007, 8, surprise everybody. And, and they said, no, this is crazy. It cannot be, you cannot distinguish all cancer cells from all normal cells. And we said, absolutely you can, right? And um, we'll show you. So anyway, so, so going forward, then, you know, we, we did many, many animal studies, many, many um, uh, clinical studies. Now there are over 10 clinical studies. Some of them are randomized. Some of them show very positive results. And now we moved away from water-only fasting into what we call fasting mimicking diet. So in a cancer patient or, or a mouse, but like in cancer patient, now we, for example, immunotherapy or chemotherapy. So we, we take this fasting mimicking diet and they are, about 600 for cancer, about 600 cal calories per day. And, and this, the patients will be on the 600 calories per day uh, fasting mimicking diet together with the standard of care, um, which could be again chemotherapy, immunotherapy, kinase inhibitor, hormone therapy, et cetera, et cetera. And the idea, which is very clearly demonstrated in mice, is that this period of four to five days of a fasting mimicking diet makes the therapy work much, much better, again, at least in mice. So, for example, triple negative breast cancer, very fast growing in a mouse, almost impossible to cure. Sure enough, if you, if you just add fasting mimicking diet, the cancer slows down, just like it slows down if you add chemotherapy, right? Now, if you had, uh, but none of the mice, 0% of the mice are cured, or maybe once in a while you see by mistake uh, a mouse that is cancer-free. Now, if you add, if you combine chemotherapy and fasting mimicking diet, all of a sudden you get, you know, 20, 40, 60%, depending on different type of, uh, of uh, cell lines, of cancer-free survival, right? So it means that you can actually start seeing mice that are cured from the cancer just by combining these two. 
and um, or uh, for example we in a recent study about a year ago we saw okay we we uh, apply the fasting mimicking diet the cancer gets desperate they started looking for a way to survive and then we can tell by molecular detection uh, which pathways how is the cell rewired the cancer cell rewired and we identify the, what we call escape pathways, and then we use drugs to block them. And now th this very aggressive cancer goes from growing very fast to actually shrinking very fast, right? So it's really remarkable. Um, now, of course, this has to be taken to humans. And again, about cl 10 clinical trials have been uh, terminated. It's looking very promising. For example, one clinical trial with breast cancer in, uh, in Holland, 125 patients randomized. It showed that the women they received, this is together with chemotherapy, the women they received, uh, they did all the cycles, six to eight cycles of chemotherapy, together with the fasting mimicking diet, they were five times less likely to be resistant to the chemotherapy. So about 27% of the women that were on their normal diet uh, were resistant, the, the chemo did not work, and only 5%, so less than five times less uh, portion of the women that were on every cycle with the fasting mimicking diet uh, we're non-responsive, right? So very promising and, and of course lots of trials remaining to be done but uh, a very good start. Another uh, study uh, done by the National Cancer Institute in Milan and, and 100 patients shows that the fasting mimicking diet makes the immune system uh, go more effectively or much more effectively against lots of different types of cancers. It starts infiltrating in the cancer and we only see this with, with the fasting mimicking diet. And then the same group uh, also showed uh, uh, a study with five patients uh, had advanced uh, stage pancreatic cancer, lung cancer, colorectal cancer, and, uh, and they reported in the European Journal of Cancer what's called exceptional responses, meaning they, they responded so well that the oncologists felt that they should do a, a paper just on describing these five cases and, and it would be very unlikely that five people with advanced stage four cancer like that will all survive long term. And I think most of them with little evidence of cancer remaining. Uh, so it doesn't, it's not conclusive, but certainly uh, very, very promising and, and now in, in need of uh, lots of clinical, additional clinical trials to demonstrate uh, efficacy.